Hi guys, Gabi from UiPath Hacks here. Today's video is about running a Python script from UiPath and passing back and forth values from the UiPath workflow to the Python script and back. Up to now, actually, I've been using Python scripts in my UiPath workflows that just did something and saved the results in some Excel file, usually. But today, I wanted the Python script to actually return a single value to my UiPath workflow. And it took me a while to figure out how to do that and solve all the errors. So I decided to make a short video and give you a quick example of how to do that. If you do not need to return any values from the Python script back to your path and you just need to pass some values from your path to Python and do some stuff with Python, then you do not actually need to use the Python activities in your path. The way I was doing it before, and this also avoids the need to have Python installed on the machine that runs the robot, was to make an .exe file out of the Python script with .py installer. This is packing everything in an .exe file. It's quite a big size one, unfortunately, and can then run in any environment. And the command to do that is py installer minus f to package everything, and then your Python script. And uh, what this does, it basically uh, packages everything in an .exe file, and then you can run it on any machine that doesn't have Python installed as well. But for today's video, we will be using the Python activities in UiPath. And to get rid of some admin stuff, first, we need to install the UiPath Python activities. So I did that already. Uh, this is the version I'm using right now. It works fine. So if you want to follow along, you can uh, install that first. And now let's move to some more interesting stuff. Our Python script is a simple linear regression model that is trained on the Boston housing dataset. The actual dataset you can find on Kaggle, I've put a link in the description below if you want to have a look at it. And it's basically predicting a house price based on a set of 13 input features like per capita crime rate by town. We can read the description of the attributes here or the average number of rooms per dwelling, or the pupil-teacher ratio by town. We will not go into the actual Python implementation of the model, but the important thing to keep in mind and to understand is that we will feed the Python script 13 parameters, and we will expect to get back a predicted price for the house. We just need to notice that we have a function definition in Python called predict, that receives 13 parameters called f1, f2, all the way up to f13 and returns one string variable, which should contain the house price. Let's have a look now at the UiPath workflow. We have everything wrapped in a Python scope activity. This needs to receive the path of the Python installation. That is right here. And one important thing to a notice is that we have to escape the backslashes. It means to type two backslashes. The first one escapes basically the second one. Then you can set the target to x64 or x32, depending on your, or x86, sorry, depending on your um, uh, installation. And for me, version auto works just fine. I have, I'm actually using Python 3.5. Let's move on to the next activity. So inside the Python scope, we have then the load Python script activity that gets basically the name or the path to the Python script. In our case, we have the Python script in the same folder as the main workflow. And then we have for the output a variable uh, of the type Python object which should um, contain the output of this Python script. 
And the next one is actually running a method inside the Python script, the invoke Python method activity. The method uh, in our Python script is called predict. So uh, we have the name of the method here. Yeah, and this goes in the name property. In the instance property, we have the Python object from the activity before, from loading the Python script. So it's basically saying, take the script in this object, take the method named predict, and then we could pass if we need to, and we do need to in this case, pass some parameters to this method. And I have here um, 13 parameters that represent values for those 13 uh, features mentioned before, based on which the model should predict the house price. So this basically runs the Python method and returns the result in a Python object variable, second one, that is called pyres. The getPython object activity is the last one we need to use, and it basically just converts the output object returned by the invoke Python method above, the pyres, into an actual um, .NET uh, variable, called in our case str underscore predicted price. And at the end, we are just logging the results and visualizing the new price or the, the price for the house. So let's run it. And here it is. The result for our input parameters provided to the model is 15.05. And this is in thousand dollars and is based on prices in the Boston area from the US from 19, eight, uh, 1970. So don't try to compare them with the house prices today. Otherwise, you would think this makes no sense. So that's it pretty much. I hope this was useful. And uh, even if you did not need to run a Python script from your path and pass back and forth different parameters so far, when you will need to do something like this, you will remember there, that there was a video on my channel describing just how to do this, and it would save you some time and frustration. But for now, you can just save it to your liked videos by clicking the like button. Also, if you'd like to play with a script, with a Python script or with a UiPath work profile, just leave a message in the comment section below and I'll be happy to send them over to you. Thank you and see you next time. Hey guys, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks.